Hello. Today we're going to rebuild a Carter fuel pump. And the first step is file locating marks on the edges of the valve housing and the pump body. Figure 65. Well, I really don't see any purpose in doing that because you have the outlet opposite the rocker and you have the inlet facing the rocker so you know how the pump body and the valve body go. So I'm not going to mar the outside body. The next thing it says, remove the valve housing to body screws and separate the parts. It may be necessary to tap on one of the parts slightly to obtain separation. So we gotta take some screws out. So we didn't have to tap the body to get them to separate. To remove the diaphragm, the rocker arm must first be removed. Remove the rivet plug, remove the rocker arm spring, remove the hairpin clip from the rocker arm pin, then using a needle nose pliers, work the pin out of the body and the rocker arm. Slip the rocker arm out of the body and lift the diaphragm and seal the assembly out of the body. The diaphragm and the seal assembly are serviced only as an assembly. So what they're talking about is in order to get this diaphragm out, you have to remove the rocker arm. And to remove the rocker arm, there is a rivet plug right here that you can work out or drill out, but it's just made out of aluminum. And then they want us to remove the rocker arm spring and then there is a pin, a clip pin up in here, clip pin and then we got to work this pivot pin out of the body. So that's the pin, and then pull the rocker arm out, and now the diaphragm comes out. Remove the valve body to bowl screws, and remove the bowl and gasket. Remove the screen, which covers the inlet valves. To remove the valves, use a small pin punch and tap the valve cage stem out of the body. Remove the valve cage spring and valves. All right, this is the valve body. This is the screws. Now this is the screen they're talking about, so we take that off of there. lint on there and then this gasket we're apart we're ready oh we got to do the valves so we get the valves out and take a little punch and go right on the stem like this. oh no Well, we just had a kind of a disaster, but we were able to recover from it. What happened was when I punched this valve out, the punch goes at, on the end of the valve like that. Well, in this case, the punch went right through it. So if you're doing this job, be very careful that the metal at the end of that valve stem is very thin. My son welded it up and I think we're good to go here. So let's start putting this thing back together. The first thing says, install the valve assemblies in the valve body by first placing the valve on the body and aligning the holes. Slip the spring over the valve cage stem, then tap the cage into position in the body so that the end of the stem is flush with the other side of the surface. The cage must not be sealed against the valve. Place the inlet screen over the valves. Okay, we start our rebuild here. 
We take the old spring out, put the new spring in, put a uh, washer on top of that, and then that gets set down into this valve body. Like so. And you can almost push it in. If you see right here, it's not quite flush. And now it is flush. So we'll do the rest of the valves into place. Okay, so we put the inlet screen over to the two inlet valves and gently massage it into position. Then we put the gasket so the opening is over the inlet so it can suck gas in. Next step. Assemble the valve body to the bowl and install the two retaining screws. So flip this over and put this on so that the, you want to put this on so that the opening is to the inlet and tighten down the retaining screws. So valve body rebuild is done. The next thing they want us to do, soak the oil diaphragm in clean kerosene. Fuel oil may be used, but do not use sealing compounds. Insert the diaphragm assembly into the valve body, making sure that the seal is fully and squarely seated into the body. Well, we've got our valve bodies soaking here in kerosene. And what they want us to do is to, and I would suggest trying to line up the screws at the same time. Okay, so we've got that lined up. Insert the rocker arm into the body so that the end of the arm straddles the diaphragm push rod. Align the rocker arm and the body. Tap the rocker arm pin into position. Install the hairpin clip. Install the rivet plug into the body. Okay, what they want us to do is to push the plunger in, and if you look in there, you can see the stem, and we have to put the rocker arm in there to engage the stem. Then the next thing to do is to put the pivot pin in. We just line everything up and put the pin in and push it all the way in. Take this little hairpin clip and slide it onto the groove on the shaft of the pivot shaft. Like that. Then they want us to install the spring. Like so. And then they want us to put the, they gave us a new aluminum cap. So they want us to install this new aluminum cap. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to wait until the end to make sure this thing's all together. Place the pump body on the valve body and align the marks made at disassembly. Our marks were, the inlet was towards the rocker arm and the outlet was away from the rocker arm by 180 degrees. And then we want to line these holes up. By means of the rocker arm, hold the diaphragm flat across the valve body and insert the retaining screws until the heads of the screws just contact the lock washers. Don't tighten it all the way down. So let's start with this one. Okay, 
Flex the diaphragm to make sure that it opens freely. Then move the rocker arm through its full stroke. While holding it at this position, tighten all the screws securely. So they want us just to make sure it works and then to push it all the way down and tighten these screws while it's pushed all the way down. So, like that. Wow, this is not going to be easy. All right, like that. One more. Okay. Wow. We didn't use this pin because it doesn't have a slot in it. We use the same keeper pin. There's a retention, that's that little aluminum plug that we're gonna put in now that we're all done. These are for the Studebaker. This is the gasket go between the block. And we're all set. Thank you very much. There'll be more.